Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some router work on this Pablo Picasso image. Now on the original one, which I've seen online, they actually used a scroll saw to cut out all these sections, all the white sections, basically just leaving the nose, the mouth, and the two eyes. So when you put it up against the wall, whatever colour your wall, would show through these sections here. But I'm actually going to route all this out and in, in, inlay the full piece with a resin. So it's going to be quite a lot of resin on this one. It's a big project for me. It's literally about 30 inches by 14 inches across. We're not interested in these sections here. That would have been better if we were actually cutting it out the inside, should I say. This will all be eventually cut out with a scroll saw at the end. And we just, like I say, we're going to route all these sections out and inlay them with the appropriate or whatever colour resin we can mix and find at the time. As always for me, we've got our image there. We've stuck it down with a bit of painter's tape. This allows you just to flick it over. over. And I use carbon paper. I actually placed six pieces on this one, like so, all the way down. And then drew around this. It's all part of the project, and this is the way I do it. Carbon paper and trace is the easiest way for me. So we drew around it all, and literally remove the template, and there's our lovely image underneath. I'll just take this bit of tape off the sides. That way, also remember, you can use this template over and over again, should you want to. I've seen people before just glue the paper straight to the wood and route over the top. And you might have got away with it with this one because there's nothing too complicated. There's nothing detailed on it. But for me personally, carbon and trace. And there it's it, there it is. Now normally I would shade in the areas that we want to remove. But on this occasion I just had a pen and we put little crosses in just to let us know these are the pieces we want to route out. You will go away, come back. Start routing this section out. Well, that's the end of your project. So take your time, try by shading the areas that you want to remove or the areas that you want to keep if you want to shade in those areas. So we're going to remove all this, route it all out. It's quite a big project, like I say. And it's actually on 12 millimeter plywood. If I can just get underneath there, 12 millimeter plywood. I would have preferred a nice bit of pine or something but I just don't have any wood at this size. So plywood is going to be fine. And like I say, once it's all routed out, we will cut it out literally on a scroll saw and remove all this outer section. Right, for routing, as always for me on these projects and on 90% of my projects, I like to use these little CNC bits. I think they're called carbon something something, but I, we, for CNCs, but we, uh, machines. Which I just call them CNC bits. I will put links in the description. And they come with different degrees on 20s, 30s. That one's actually a 15. And that is basically just the cut at the end, the angle of that cut. I think this one will be a 15. And that will be plenty for me. We're not too bothered about any angles of cut as we're going to basically fill them all in nearly with resin. Now they have a small shaft on, a 3.175 millimeter, and they will fit a Dremel. If you have a Dremel with the router attachment, but for a quarter inch shank router, you need what they call an adapter reducer collet, 6.35 millimeter. You can see from there, basically just a tube, a couple of slits in, and you slide your CNC bit into there. That has now got the quarter inch shaft on, and that will fit your router no problem. If you've got the, a router that takes half an inch, you're obviously going to need a bigger adapter collet. So we will use this to do all our lines. Remember, we're doing inset, that's inside the piece. If we're coming in from outside, obviously that would be outset. And we always route up to the line, never on the line itself, in most cases. The reason being, if you had a small section, like this piece here, we want to route up to that line, up to that line. If you're out down on the line, by the time you've gone down three millimeters, you've narrowed that section, and by the time you've gone down there, you've narrowed that section. So you will actually alter the small pieces. You might get away with it on this one because it's plenty big enough but if you're doing a really detailed piece that only had like a couple of millimeters and you went down the line you would basically route out that middle section altogether if that makes sense so 
always up to the lines like so once we've done all our line work all the way around the full piece we'll start off with one of these little end milling bits these are great for clearing out with i've certainly got no issues for these i want you to pay from ebay for me personally or amazon you can't go wrong they have the same size shaft on them 3.175 millimeter and you simply just slot them in there like so i do find it hard now to find those with the colored back bands on so you'll find them without and they're exactly the same piece so we will start off with one of those for the clear out now if it's a bit too slow and i'm not one for rushing i'm certainly in no rush to do any of these projects there is other bits out there I use these straight flush bits normally, they're quite aggressive, I certainly wouldn't pop that in, I mean that would rip that out, no problem, but you might find, as you come up to here, the force and the speed of that will catch that, and it could pop that section off altogether, so that's far too big. So for me personally, a smaller one like so, this is one eighth bit, the smallest one they do in these, and they have a quarter inch shaft on, so you don't need the adapter, we might try those later just to see how quickly but if it's coming out nicer with the little end mini bits we'll stick to them okay we'll set it all up about three millimeters are doing depth wise which is literally like i say the thickness of your adapter and i have a piece of wood somewhere two seconds yeah i've marked it off on a piece of wood there so i will set my router on top of there with the bit inside and set it to that number two i believe and that's just nice it's the same thickness as that so that's our depth and that is plenty enough for routing out and popping our resin inside okay let's pop this in the router we'll set it to three millimeters and start routing this one out right so we've made it all the way around with those cnc bits they've cut out no problem you might notice there on some of these it's a little bit dusty inside but they've, they have been cut out and you you'll notice how sometimes i just skim around it again afterwards with a little blower on my router and it just blows the dust away but that's certainly no problem now i do find with plywood it depends on the look of the drawer and the obviously where you purchase it from I've never had any really vast issues, but on this one here, it seems to be a bit of a hole in here. If I can just take my phone off its little stand just to show you. I'll just come around there. We've got ourselves a bit of a, a nasty spot there. So just be aware of that when you are doing using plywood. It doesn't affect us personally because we are going to use resin to fill all that in. But if you're going to put paint in there or whatever, that's going to look a bit nasty. But the rest of it has come out fine. As you can see, everything's all nicely routed out. The good thing about these kind of projects, they don't have to be spot on. So if you've missed something and you're maybe not on the line, it doesn't really matter. But you notice here, look, we just route up, up to the line the best we can. Right, the next stage now, I'm going to just pop this back onto my little homemade stand. I film everything from my mobile phone, so nothing fancy here. 
Right, we're back in position. So that's it for the CNC bit. So we will literally remove this. You will get a lot more projects uh, projects out of that, I guarantee you. And we'll pop on one of our end milling bits. I'm just going to start off with the, the smaller one to start off with. Just to get inside these little pointed areas here. And then we'll see about popping on one of those straight flush bits. When I first started my projects, that's all I ever used, just that one bit there. With the line work, the clear out and everything. And remember, there is different pieces out there, different bits, profile bits, liner bits, spiral up cuts, down cuts. It's finding the, the piece and the bit, should I say, that works for you. But I'm going to use one of these little end milling bits now. These are ideal because they will smooth out the bottom section as well as the side. So where you think maybe you've not quite got it, you can come in and just nibble away with this. So we simply just pop it into the same adapter collet, which I can't find. <laughs> the adapter collet is already on the bit. Okay, we're losing the plot today. And we'll set it to a depth. Notice I do these little depth gauges here, just in certain areas. So we'll pop that in the router, set it to the same depth, and start removing all those areas that we put our little cross sections on. Right, you can see from that, that's clearing out really nice with those end milling bits. It's just a little bit too slow. And I certainly have no issues with that. I do find as I'm routing out, you just get into the zone and I find it quite relaxing to be honest. But because I have shown you these straight flush bits, these are rough things now, these red ones here. I've actually ordered some new ones and they're the colour blue now. And they come in these nice little fancy cases. I put one on the machine, got a nice blue one in there, you can just about see it. And we set it to the same depth, and I'm just going to use that one to start clearing out with, just to speed things up a little bit. But like I say, with my projects, there's certainly no rush. We've done the delicate areas around the eyes and stuff, so we've got no problem. So there is just these bigger sections to remove. So just to speed things up slightly, we've popped in a straight flush bit. Okay, we'll continue and remove the rest of this project. Okay, so we've had a little go with the single bladed, I think that's a 1 8 bit. And it's still a little bit too slow and it's taking its time so we're going to call in the big guns and we're going to go for a double bladed piece. All the sizes come with the bits when you order them. So we've got two blades on that Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive, so we shouldn't have any issues with these areas here. Remember, we've done our so-called delicate bits. So we'll continue removing it with that bigger straight flush bit. Right, so we've cleared it all out. Those double-sided straight flush bits 
they certainly did the job no problem but like i say you couldn't use them on delicate projects and there's some really big nice big chunky sizes you can get i will put a little link in the description just cheap cheap ebay specials but if you want to clear out a lot of area in a short period of time you won't go far wrong with those remember we started off with the end milling bits they were just a little bit too slow and then we went up to the single blade flush piece and then we ended up with a double one and that took that out no problem whatsoever when a couple more issues remember we had that one down the bottom there this is not going to affect us it's the only stuff with plywood you get what you get kind of thing we're going to inlay all that with resin and there's a little section up here as well if i can just show you something there but if you're going to put paint in that that one certainly uh would cover up nicely if you were to put a bit of filler in there or something and a little bit of sanding down so if resin is not your thing you can certainly cover this with paint inside downside with plywood you can't do too much sanding on top as you will take off the top layer and become slightly yellow but remember we're going to paint this all black so you could actually sand this down no problem which we're going to do eventually just to clear the pencil lines but remember we are going to paint this so it doesn't really matter so if you want to put paint inside then sand it to make it all nice and sharp and then do your painting of these side bits uh, top bits afterwards but for me i've just had a nice delivery of resin this morning so and it won't take a lot we can actually fill this in and make it just slightly different than the standard paint and route out kind of project now to cut this out you could leave that on that board if you wanted to put a frame around it darken the frame down at the back of the back of the frame if you want to for me i'm actually going to cut out the shape it is all the way around so spiral blade on a scroll saw for me i've got a pegasus number five in here the good thing about spiral blades the teeth run the full length of the blade so that will cut in any direction so no turning of your wood whatsoever whereas with your standard blades that'll be a pin blade just there and there's a little pinless blade just behind it the pin blade will come on your more cheaper saws the pinless thin ones like that that's what your professional boys use but for me i like to use a spiral blade only downside with my little drapper saw in the corner there it only takes pin blades so these are pinless so i have to use these little adapter clamps and there's different ones out there made by different companies so we'll pop our pegasus spiral blade on give it all a cut out and then we'll just give it a little tidy up it won't be a lot remember the back section we could more or less leave that alone we're not going to see any of that i just like to get in these edges here make sure there's no little bits left about and for me personally just a cheap cheap engraving bit on the end of a flexi cable i cannot recommend these enough these are just cheap ebay again and they just attach to your dremel and we can just go in and give it a quick tidy up with these little engraving bits you'll get a pack of 30 plus of these really next to nothing and they're all different shapes and sizes like so okay so cut it out quick tidy up and then we'll be on to the painting side of things right so i drilled a little pilot hole you could have come in from the side but i'll just find it better to drill that little hole that way it will keep all the surround in one piece hopefully to be cut all the way around so we've got our spiral blade in with any of your blades be it straight blades or spirals they want to feel smooth on the way down, rough on the way up. And when you've took your tension up, be it at the top of the saw here, mine's at the back, wants a nice ping ping sound like that. Okay, we're all set up. Let's just cut this one out now.
Right, so we cut it out on the scroll saw. We went in with the Dremel just to tidy up those edges. A mouse sander and then good bit old sandpaper itself. So we've rounded all these edges off just enough to take that sharp edge off and the same with the sides. And we've also we've cleaned all those little back sections off as well. And that's it. A little bit big for me this project. I just struggled to get it all in, but you can more or less see everything's all nicely cleaned out as you can see from there. Now the next stage for me, normally I'd put stain on just to darken it all down. But I'm just going to spray the full piece black. I've checked out the original image that the Picasso had done himself. And uh, he also used black paint. So I'm going to spray it all black. And then we'll come with our coloured resin. And just basically just fill each section in, in random colours. Or nails we can find. And see what the end project looks like. Remember, you could have got away with paint on this. There's certain areas that have been a bit rough. You notice that bigger hole we had down there? I've actually just filled that in. So that's not going to be any issue whatsoever. So it's just going to be a simple case of spraying it. I've got a black gloss. A 151 gloss. I'll spray it with this. I've got a bit of mat there just to use up. So we might throw that on top. And depending how glossy it is, you know it's going to come. I like to finish all my, all my projects with a bit of lacquer or varnish afterwards. The reason for that is it just I just like a nice shiny finish. Don't have to be too over the top. And hopefully, once the paint's gone in, and then the varnish on top, it will just seal this plywood and just help reduce any of those bubbles that might be in the resin. But we'll certainly sort those out when we pop it in. So for now, we'll just do a bit of spray job. I'll go outside, it's nice and sunny today. And when we come back, this full piece will look different again. Right, there's all our black paint on. That's gone on no problem whatsoever. Two or three coats, let it dry, pop another one on, and you're good to go. Now normally... I would come in now with my varnish and let's just spray it. it it is just the way i like to finish all my projects a quick spray on there one it does give it a nicer shine to it and two hopefully it will just seal this plywood a little bit more and that helps with the resin side of things as regards to bubbles and stuff like that remember if resin wasn't your thing you could paint this inside all these with the appropriate colors Quick sanding down. We'll get away with it with the plywood because remember you're going to paint it black and you could literally just paint all these raid sections afterwards with your black paint and a brush. But for me, we're going to just inlay it all with resin and the black looks fine as it is. So believe it or not, I'm not going to spray anything on. I'll just turn that nicely there for look. We've got enough going on there. And hopefully that's all nicely sealed. I don't really have any issues with the resin side of things. And remember, we're not going to go right to the top with the resin. It's just enough. Remember, I keep saying remember. Resin does have a concave effect when it cures. So try and go as, fill it in as much as you can. Just allowing for that little slightly concave effect once it's done. So right, that's it. So there's no spray varnish going on this one at all. That's plenty enough. For what we want so let's go and find some resin and basically start filling this one in okay resin time unfortunately i can't fit this project fully in our little setup on my mobile phone here but we'll get the basic idea so we're literally going to fill all sections in with different colors let's go a bit random we don't want it identical to the original abstract painting so we can just go crazy and do as we wish now the resin today is vista one like all your resin it's a two-part resin you will get a your resin and b your adna or catalyst i believe and you just mix the two together now watch your resins some resins are one to one two to one three to one some resins are deep pour some resins are craft resins this one is what they call a one-to-one -one, and you mix it by 
volume, some resins you will mix by weight, so you will require digital scales. But this is by volume and it's a one to one, so whatever A, your resin you mix volume wise, you want exactly the same amount of B, your Ardena. And the way I do mine is to use these little cheap, cheap party cups. They come with little grooves on the side. So I will have A, my resin, and I'll go, we're going to go to five today, just pure guesswork on some of these projects. So you want A, your resin, and also you want exactly the same B for your Ardena, and we've marked up five little grooves on that. And the idea is we pour that into the, excuse me, A into that one, B into that one, and then I just pour B into A. They do say on some resins, transfer both into a third container. It's something I've never done and I've never had any issues. Once you've mixed up that little bit of resin, we will be popping some colour in. Now there's powders out there, there's inks, there's all sorts of stuff. I use just acrylic paint and we just drop a bit of acrylic paint in there with our resin. And for mixing purposes, these little plastic party knife, forks and spoons are ideal. They have a nice little groove in there. That's enough. Once you've mixed it, we can scoop it out and just feed it into our project to help it on its way. Nice cocktail stick, just to feed it. It will flow to a certain extent, but sometimes you just gotta help it along its way. And once the resin's actually gone in, we will go over the top with a lighter, like so, and we just skim across, and that just helps all those bubbles disappear. And on a bigger project like this, we can bring out the big guns and just flick over the top like that. You'll see as we go along. We'll pop the first colour in. I'm going to focus on the eyes first, just because it's the smallest amount, so we could mix one batch up, separate into three little cups, and do the orange, the yellow, and the whites of the eyes. And then these bigger sections, we have to mix a fair amount of resin for those. Remember, we're not going to the top, just as near as we can, because it will get a concave effect once it cures and sets. Okay, I'll mix the first batch off camera, then when we come back, we can basically start filling this one in. Just before we go off and do that, I just remembered there looking to the right hand side, I just received a nice batch of my resin this morning, literally just got come in the post, and for some reason, the last couple of loads I've got, you will find the A mix, now B is fine, that's quite soft and usable, the A, the resin, that is just one big solid lump. You cannot do anything with that at this moment in time. So what we'll do, we'll use the leftovers from the old one, which is soft, I've looked inside. This one needs to stand in warm water for a good half an hour or so. So don't be concerned if your resin turns up and it's one big solid lump. Stand it in warm water for half an hour and it will soften and soften and soften and obviously come out in the liquid form it should be. I don't know why to start doing this with uh, Vista One. I've had plenty of resins off them in the past, and the last two or three have been one big solid lump. It's all weather, weather wise, cold weather will make it solid like that. So just warm that up in warm water. And while that's doing that, we'll mix up our first batch and start filling this one in. Right, there's our first batch of resin just mixed up. Follow all your instructions. Please, please put your gloves on. Don't follow my example. I personally myself, I've never had any issues, but some people, certain resin groups I've had, when they get resin on the skin, it can turn out quite nasty with sores and stuff. Have the proper mask on and have plenty of ventilation. Right, so there's our first little batch mixed. Nice little, little piece in there. We're going to transfer a little bit. We are going to start on the eyes, only because they're the smallest pieces. And as we get bits left over, we can move on to the bigger sections. So I'm simply just going to have a quick look, basically guess how much we think we're going to need. I'm going to pop a bit in there. That will be our first colour. And we've got enough left there to do another colour in a minute. We'll do the first one fairly steady, and as we move on, we'll speed things up. Now with your paints, they do reckon 10% of whatever volumes in your cup. Personally myself, I just put in I like a nice, nice solid colour. We'll just pop a bit in there like so. And just give it a nice mix. We was already painting this completely and that's the reason why I do do it this way. Because it's got a nice dark background. If your resin is maybe not as 
solid a colour as you like, the diamonds in the background will help. I've had certain projects where I've done the stain on the side and it's gone over a little bit, put the resin on top and you can still see the stain underneath. So nowadays we just cover the full piece. So there's our first colour, nicely mixed up hopefully. And if it's not enough, you can always pop a little bit more in. I'm going to pop a little bit more in there. Just a little bit, not too much. Off. There we go, that would be near enough what we want. So hopefully we have nice, solid colours. If you're doing a stained glass effect, and we had a membrane polythene at the back of this, uh, cellar tape or anything, just to seal it all, you wouldn't need to put so much colour in, because obviously we want the light to shine through. But this is actually a wall plaque, so nice, solid colours. So we pop our first ones in. Remember, we can use the back of that spoon. Drop a section in, just to see how dark it looks. That's going to be plenty there. Now I know for a fact I'm going to have too much yellow here. So I will... Ah, nearly went to the wrong one there. Careful. I do have side little side projects that I will be filling in. You'll be surprised how, much, how far this resin goes. And you can come back and just top it up like so. Remember, you've got your little cocktail stick, that's ideal, just to feed it in to those sections that you probably can't get into. Like so. And quickly, same over here. I will put a bit more yellow in this eye. But we get the general idea from that. Like I said previously, we just want it maybe just slightly under the level of the eye itself. Okay, that will be plenty in there. You can see those eyes popping out straight away. And as you pop each colour in, a little skim over like that. It's hard to see on camera, but that will help all those bubbles disappear. Okay, I'll pop this into another little side mould that I've got going and then we'll just continue with the rest of the colours and fill this one in nicely. Right, that's our last bit of resin gone in. We'll hide a nice big cover for this, cover it over, come back in 24 hours, and we'll see what it's like. Remember, as we've been filling in the resin, we've been going along, like so, quick skim over, or some bit more delicate, like that. and that just helps all those bubbles. And there's a lot of them, but you'll see there, look, we've got plenty of colour in this one today. Okay, let's cover it over and then we'll come back in 24 hours. Okay, that's it. This little project is finished. Now it's about 24 hours later. Personally, myself, I'll leave this for a couple of more days. They do say it takes up to 30 days for resins to fully cure. Personally, myself, I'll be quite happy to hang this one up tomorrow with no problems. Now the only downside for doing this project, 
is one this was a blue in this corner just about get it in and that was a purple up there i mean the camera might not give you the proper colors we will go outside and show you and for me personally both colors more or less look not far off the same i think it depends the lighting and on this one here unfortunately as i was filling the yellow in a blob of yellow landed on top of there now i tried to scoop it out but it uh, it altered the color of the blue so in the end I actually went round and just basically just try to give it a ripple effect inside and you might just to see it there now i quite like that effect so i tried to do it on the yellow and this dark red here but they unfortunately just blended back in so it is what it is so that one there's got a bit of a ripple effect going in it apart from that everything's fine i think there was an air up here somewhere that caught in just see there not even worth talking about like any artwork from a distance i'm sure it will look fine and like i say everything's nicely solid we've certainly got no problems with that we will take it outside like i say and we'll see the better better image it's just a little too too small in my little space here and for filming off my camera so it's all gone well so apart from them top colour there and there, they're just a bit too much similar colours. I would have rather we're stuck with these different ones here, but it's done now. So that's the end of this little project. When I'm, and when I say little, it's actually 30 inches by 15 inches across. And it's routed out on 12 millimetre plywood. We will pop a little hook on the back for angling purposes. That's plenty on that. And if you remember, we start off with our little CNC bits for all the lines. We did a little bit of work with those end milling bits. They were just a little bit too slow. So we came in with some bigger straight flush bits. They worked out fantastic. They cleared that area, no problem whatsoever. And then we just sprayed on a bit of black gloss. And then we mixed Vista One resin with acrylic paints for all the colouring and that worked out fantastic I had no issues with that some colours do go better than others black's a good colour for the, for the resin so is white and red and so on this one up here is maybe a bit funny is that purple colour I couldn't say that was my best but if we just get it in the light it's, it's worked out fine and like I say everything's solid and that's it this little project is finish so it's my interpretation of a pablo picasso abstract artwork routed out on 12 millimeter plywood and inlaid with resin mixed with acrylic paints thank you very much for watching